We did have a, a couple questions too, because again, you guys are high profile teams, you know, race on the up, but I would argue definitely a high profile operation now. And of course, Mike and Ryan, you guys have been having teams for a long while. This was from a parent that actually texted me right before he went live and he wanted to know both kind of what expectations or benefits people can anticipate of starting to run with a bigger operation. Like, uh, you know, some parents, as you guys know, and Brandon, now, you know, run at the local level, expect you to wave a magic wand and make their kid faster, you know, first weekend. That's a far and few case and not realistic, but they want to know, you know, what are you, what does the program look like? And a secondary question they had as well is, you know, are there certain parents you want or don't want or certain drivers you want or don't want in terms of your tent environment? So I'll pass it off to Absolutely. you, Mike. Absolutely. Yeah. Or race. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You no, don't no, no, want. Mike can go, please. Mike can go. Mike, would you like to go oh, off? Oh, you you go first. I mean, <laughs> if, if you don't want to, whoever I'll wants to. I'll go first. <laughs> so which, one, which one you want me to start with first? Just. Let's what start with what a, what a team environment looks like here under Mike Cody Race. <laughs> oh, shit. A lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of tissues, a lot of crying. No. <laughs> Grant says I'm too soft. Grant says I'm too soft now. Because uh, yeah, you made him cry over the years. No, yeah, no, no. Brandon's he doesn't make him anymore. It's not fun. No, I think yeah. the biggest thing is when, when you're going with the bigger teams, everyone thinks that you're doing 100 different things, right? And that's not true. You're trying to keep it simple for the driver. The people nowadays, their skill level is not very high. So if you're changing the cart around every session, then it, they're not going to get used to it. They can't adapt fast enough. And that's their biggest thing, right? You'll have somebody be good for one session, one of the, somebody under your tent. They'll be like first or second. Well, the next session, you don't change anything. They're 20th and 30th. And they want to know what happened. Nothing happened. The track changed. The line changed. They didn't adapt fast enough. So that's what we're there for, to try to tell them how to adapt, you know, when to turn in. And then they're going to share the data with the other kids under your tent that are faster. And that's really going to help them because sometimes if they're watching their video, they might not get it. If they're watching somebody else's video, they might be able to get it a lot easier for them. So that's what we try to like preach when somebody comes over that we don't need to change an axle every session. We don't need to always go up five teeth. Someone goes, Oh, I want to go up five teeth. I'm like, is that going to help you hit an apex? No. Then why are we doing that? Like, <laughs> we got to hit apexes. <laughs> Missing apexes by five foot here eight foot there you keep dropping wheels but you want to change a gear that ain't gonna help you well maybe we should change the tire pressure again that ain't gonna help you <laughs> you gotta work on yourself don't worry about everybody else i try to be as straightforward as possible i tiptoe around it a little bit until i get to the end of the day until the end of the day when i'm hearing it for the fifth time then i have to be a little bit more abrasive with them so i, I think that's the benefits on, on that with that type of stuff what else was the other stuff uh, well, let, let's, let's see. Let's, we'll give these guys the other stuff. The other stuff will be who you want driver wise and parent wise under the tent and who you don't want under the tent. And that's going to be a little, really fun one. We'll get to at the end. Um, that'll, that'll be good. That'll be good. So, um, Ryan, you've been doing this a while as well. I mean, you know, pretty similar stuff, right? A lot of it's just talking guys off the ledge and being, it, it's not super complicated. Just go out and drive the go-kart. Yeah. The biggest thing is like Mike said, you just, need to make sure they're hitting the lines you know if you're missing the apexes by a few feet there's no point to change anything on the chassis but uh the biggest thing with the team environment is um i think a lot of the top teams they have a lot of good people you know within the team that have a, a vast amount of uh, experience so that's kind of like with us we have a lot of our mechanics or you know maybe maybe not all of them but uh, a lot of them have been at the top level as a driver so that helps right you have a lot of different knowledge, people that, that have all raced and then other people, you know, that we have that maybe didn't have a ton of racing experience. I've been in a sport for say 20, 30, 40 years. So, um, and then just, uh, different people, we have, uh, like a lot of different drivers. So you can, you know, that you're not going to get like too far out in the left field. I think a lot of people, if they're running on their own, maybe they're, they're thinking they're lost, but, uh, at the end, maybe they're not. So. Um, that's the difference. I think just uh, knowing that you're not too far off and getting too far out of the window. Right. Uh, race. What, what, what could you add on there more? Um, yeah. I mean that these guys obviously know how to win races and championships as, with their teams. And, um, you know, I, to answer that first question, I think that the, um, the best thing you can get from a, you know, going with a team, especially if you're going from a club level or regional level to a national program, um, would be data. I mean, for us, it's data. We have a good, you know, at least one solid driver that, you know, is a, usually a team or factory driver of ours, um, at, 
each race of these nationals and we utilize their data and their setup knowledge and uh, what we're doing on that go-kart to kind of mimic to the drivers that we're, we're really just working on the driving with. Um, so it, my philosophy is, you know, let's make sure we have good power. Uh, let's make sure the chassis setup's right. So that way all we have to really focus on is the driver. So as long as what I usually am doing or under our tent at least uh, is making those changes based on what our factory driver at the time or team driver at the time is doing uh, to acclimate to the track and we continue to focus on the driving and the data with each of the uh, the up and coming drivers that we have on the team in development. Yeah, that's good too. And again, Mike and Ryan, you know, they've got the same setup as well, everyone, you know, where they've got uh, drivers they've continued to work on. You get some guys that are farther along in the development process where you're not having to tell them to hit an apex every single time. And that can be the guy that you can do those experimental changes with. And then while you're working on one kid hit the apex, you've already kind of got the winning setup there by having another guy kind of halfway down the way towards getting to a winning go-kart. So it accelerates it. And then Ryan's point too, right? You've got a lot of experience under the tent.